This is a follow-up to my first video on the 6502 badge. The badge is the 6502 single board computer kit sold for $25. The first video showed the mods I made mostly involving putting everything in sockets and building a power breakout board. In this video I'll show how to run the computer without the LED display that came with the kit by hooking up an LCD display. This will only work if you built the kit with headers so the display is removable. The badge uses two of the LEDs in the display for its reset circuit. If you remove the display, the processor won't function. All you need to do to run the badge without it is to plug in a red and yellow LED into the header. Here's the layout of the header with the LED locations drawn in. Here are the two LEDs soldered to their male headers. And here they are plugged into the badge. Let's hook up the display. It's a bare 2x16 HD44780 LCD display I got on eBay for a few dollars. It, it doesn't have an extra board on the back to give it an IC2 or serial interface. It'll be hooked up in a 4-bit mode so we only need 6 outputs from the badge. Here are the connections between the LCD and the badge's display header. A0 through A5 are on the display header. The ground and 5 volt connections are made to the power breakout board. It is just a piece of perf board with two rows of male headers. One row for 5 volts and one row for ground. The contrast and the read write lines are connected to ground. You can see here that D0 through D3 on the LCD aren't connected since we're using 4 bit mode. The display has a backlight so the anode marked A goes to 5 volts. You need a current limiting resistor since the backlight is an LED. I put the 220 ohm resistor in the wire that goes from a cathode marked K to ground. After all the wires are hooked up and the board is powered up, the display should look like this. Now I'll send the program over. Here I'm typing E4 to see what's in that RAM location. Sometimes the characters get garbled for some reason. I'll change the contents of location E4 with a command E4 colon 0 enter to stop the scrolling routine. It seems to behave better after you turn off the scrolling. Now I'll cold start EH basic with the at command. I'm using the 2K RAM that came with the kit so I'll enter 2048 for memory size. I'm going to copy the program from notepad and paste it into a terminal window. I showed my TerraTerm settings in the last video that make for a pretty reliable copy and paste. You can list the program to make sure it was sent right. I think that's my screen recording software acting up at the end of a listing. The first couple of lines look garbled so I'll list them. They look alright. Entering free zero will show the free RAM. And finally run the program. It prints out the strings at the start of the program on the two lines of the LCD. Pressing a key ends the program and shows the ready prompt. Let's run it again just for good measure. Print free zero shows fewer bytes than we had before we ran the program. They were used by the variables. Now I'll change one of the strings and run it again. The string was shorter so we have a few more bytes of free memory. Let's take a look at the program. I've added a lot of comments to it. I left the comments out of a version I uploaded to the badge so it would fit in the 2K. The first two lines are the string variables that will be displayed. Line 10 puts some initial values into the variables PA and PD. 
These are the variables that I'll be using as shadow registers for the output ports. Since the output ports are just latches that can't be read, we need to keep track of the last values we wrote to them. PA is the shadow register for the latch hooked to the lowest eight bits of the address lines. PD is the latch hooked to the data lines. The poke is what puts the values into the latch. All 16 bits are latched at the same time. It's strange, but it works. Line 20 calls a delay loop to give time for the display to settle after power up. It's usually in the startup code when a microcontroller drives the LCD because the microcontroller starts executing code right after it powers up. It's probably not necessary in this application. Line 110 puts the command to set 8-bit mode on the display's data lines. Line 120 calls the subroutine at 8000 to pulse the enable line. Line 125 calls the delay subroutine. The delay is necessary after the first 8-bit command. Lines 130 and 140 call the pulse enable routine to send the set 8-bit command of the second and third time. Finally, we can set it to 4-bit mode with lines 150 and 160. Now that the display is in 4-bit mode, we'll use the subroutine at lines 6000 and 6001 to send characters and commands to it. The subroutine has two entry points. A go sub 6000 will send a command like clear screen or set the cursor position. A go sub 6001 will display the ASCII character in the variable ch at the current cursor position. The command sent in line 165 sets the display for two logical lines. This is a 2x16 display I'm using and has two logical lines which are not the same as the physical lines. If it were a 4x20 display it would still have two logical lines. Lines 170 and 180 turn the display on and the cursor off and it also turns the cursor blink off. Lines 190 and 200 set the cursor to increment after every character. Lines 210 through 230 clear the screen and call a delay. The delay is supposed to be a minimum of a couple of microseconds so the one I'm using is probably much longer than it needs to be. Lines 500 through 520 use the midstring function to extract characters from a string to be displayed and uses the ASC function to convert the character to a number that can be sent to the display. Entering the subroutine at line 6001 sets the register select line high so the character is displayed and not used as a command. Line 600 and 610 sets the cursor to the start of the second line. Notice the subroutine is entered at line 6000 so the character is used as a command. Lines 620 through 630 just send the second string to the display. Line 1050 calls a subroutine that waits for a key press and line 2000 ends the program. In order for the display to operate in 4-bit mode, the data has to be divided into two 4-bit nibbles. The high nibble is placed on the data lines D7 through D3 and the enable line is pulsed. Then the low nibble is placed on the data lines and the enable is pulsed again. The subroutine starting at line 6000 handles all this. It has two entry points. If you enter the routine at line 6000, the register select line will be set low. The PA and PA, not 16, does this. 16 is the bit weight of the register select line hooked to the latch output A4 on the header. It then jumps over line 6001, so it's not set back to high. Entering the routine at line 6001 sets the register select line high. Line 6002 keeps the top 4 bits as they are and sets the bottom 4 bits to 0. Since we're using the latch outputs A3 through A0 for our data, we need to shift the top 4 bits of the data being sent to the bottom 4 bits. Then it is ORed with the uh, top four bits of the shadow register PA. The end result is the low nibble of the latch holds the high nibble of the data being sent, and the high nibble of the latch is unaffected. Line 6010 does all that. Line 6020 pulses the enable to send the first nibble of the data. Line 6110 does the same thing as line 
6010, but it doesn't have to shift the data. It just ORs the low nibble of the data being sent with a shadow register. Line 6120 pulses the enable line to send the second nibble. After the second nibble is sent, the LCD will display the data or execute the command. Line 6200 leaves the register select line high. The subroutine at 8000 takes the enable line high and then back low again. BASIC seems slow writing to the screen, so in a future video I'll use assembly language to speed things up a little. So goodbye for now.